Hola, bienvenidos al podcast Shift Gear, and this is Spanish for hello and welcome to the Shift Gear podcast. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've done that before. Um, we have. But I met, we definitely have, um, but y'all aren't OG enough to know that. If you've seen the the original Spanish episode, comment down below. Um, that's, I learned that from Armando Arce in round four. Super cool guy. I wanted to speak the, speak the language in honor of him. Super cool opponent. So um, we have like absolutely nothing special to talk about in Shift Gear this week. Nothing really happened this weekend uh, hard, hard to find content you know one of those weeks yeah really <laughs> hard to find content this week i think we're just gonna end it now like we'll, we'll see you guys next week um all right karen you have four minutes to uh to tell us what happened and then we're moving on to pokemon olympics is really what i wanted to open this up with but uh we'll give you your fame so something crazy happened this weekend y'all and uh, if you're new here, welcome to the Shift Gear Podcast. We understand that a lot of you probably are uh, clicking on here for the first time. So um, first of all, what I want to start with is look who decided to put on his damn bucket hat. Bro, I wear them in the episodes, man. What are you talking about? Look who decided to put it on. Bro, I have them, my headphones over the bucket hat. That's how committed I am to the bucket hat. You can do that on stream? Bro, I tried so hard on stream. I even tried to make my fun fact that our podcast has bucket hats, and they didn't want to say the Shift Gear by name. So, uh, Really? Po Pokemon's anti-Shift Gear, bro actual like that's absolute rat behavior i can't believe that that's crazy i was uh you don't understand like i was getting so many people like talking to me like yo why is kieran not wearing his bucket hat on stream bro and like deep down i, I knew you couldn't but uh i still had to give you a little bit of a little bit of heck for it so thank you for putting it on it's a really nice bucket hat you no, have on. thank you yeah. to everybody who bought bucket hats and wore them this weekend i saw so many mans in the shift gear bucket hats yeah i did too uh delivered a couple to them um it was just fun to walk around and just like spot someone wearing it i'm like oh hey like uh i like yeah. your hat <laughs> people seem to like the one you have a lot too the uh the yeah i, I like this one, one the solid the solid color very nice it's also mm -hmm. a cheaper hat so it is a cheaper hat and if you want would like a hat the hats are linked down below uh feel free to pick <laughs> one out um okay so let's get into what we're actually here for so my co-host over here um happened to final a regionals uh second place of baltimore regionals which i believe is the biggest regionals of all time but i could be uh wrong. i mean i feel like most of them get around that amount of people now i don't know if it was because yeah. i feel like the cast is what i mean a big deal about it if it was no I looked at the numbers it was bigger like i believe it was bigger than indy last year and mm. orlando but i don't know maybe i guess it's off by a little bit but unbelievable achievement as much as i like to give you a bunch of trash and slack and stuff this is unreal dude uh sick run and everybody is here to hear all about your run so first off how does it feel to kind of go and i know you've won a national uh two national championships before i've three, only won two? one <laughs> one you should have said three i would have i would have believed it um i know you've won a national championship before um but what does it feel like to go farthest than you've gone previously in the modern era like how does that whole thing kind of go i know second sometimes feels like the worst place to finish how are you kind of taking that in right now um i mean like it feels good obviously like uh, i think my finals like i really don't think there was anything i could have done better like if i made a mistake or there's other lines like i think i would have been more disappointed but um i mean henry just had like the nuts both games so and like henry was a great guy so i was really happy for him and yeah. honestly like i was playing lugia like you have to run hot to even make top cut no matter what deck you're playing so um just the run i had was like amazing um the flips for the most part went my way i didn't brick that often so it felt great um but yeah it really sucked not to win i wanted that so badly um like yeah that's like my fifth top cut in the modern era if you go back to like before modern era i have like probably like four or five other ones like i've gotten second in the regionals before i've gotten second in nationals top four in ic top four regionals like it sucks to always come so close and just not have that one trophy or medal assist champion on it but um yeah. it was still a like fantastic result and like i know one day uh i'm gonna get one coming bro it's yeah. coming uh yeah henry seemed like a really super, super yeah henry's cool a great guy um, yeah yeah i know you guys were chopping it up on stage we kind of even like hear it through the stream <laughs> uh the, yeah the one thing i was gonna do and like I, I remember so i told you earlier today that i had a joke that i really wanted to put out but i decided not to go through with it so the one thing i was gonna do is i was gonna ask henry to send in like a video snippet just saying like hey guys uh sorry i couldn't make it to the shift gear podcast i'm a little bit busy and i wanted him to be like ironing his champion map <laughs> and i was gonna play it for you and i was like no nah, i can't like it's too disrespectful i can't do it i wouldn't be allowed i think that'd be hilarious oh i thought yeah i knew you would have loved it it just the uh the logistics of it was a little bit difficult and i think it would have been hilarious but it would have came across kind of dissy so <laughs> i decided not to do that but that's congratulations henry um if you didn't come second place we would have had henry on the podcast but a second for a co-host trumps the first place for anyone else yep. um so you're the guest this week i am um, the guest you're basically interviewing me and y'all yeah dude we're getting to know you all over and if you're new to the shift your podcast we're very um we're, we're very much like this we're very unserious at times we just like to 
we're two dudes in a you box, gotta balance so. the pokemon talk with the just the vibes and having fun right so. of course lugia is about having fun it um, is if you flip tails on mesagoza <laughs> your life sucks so this is kind of maybe lugia is our podcast kind of like cliche here um so okay so talk to us about lugia real quick so i think this is what everyone kind of wants to know so um lugia was kind of on the back burner a little bit after worlds a lot of people thought it was going to be one of those top decks um and it didn't really pan out to be i know rahul did really well with it but other than that it was kind of uh whatever here and there um what kind of drew you towards lugia what made you think it was a good call for the event i know we briefly talked about it i think last week where we said that we think lugia is a good call for the event but you really stuck to your guns and you played it what was kind of the thought process going into it yeah, I think my other number one deck, I mean, you can see our group chats, like, was Reggie Drago. And I think even on the pod, I said I was leaning towards Reggie Drago. And I really was, like, heading to Baltimore. Um, and it was just, like, Reggie Drago's one of those decks where it's, like, it's matchup spread, like, on paper, it's, like, very tight. Like, it's a lot of, like, 50-50, slightly unfavored. And, like, obviously, I trust myself as a player to, like, navigate through a lot of situations. Um, but I just didn't like that inherently, like, um, my matchup spread, like, wasn't that great. Uh, the other thing is, like, I knew a lot of people were cutting Sinnoh from their list. Um, I guess I'm kind of leaking stuff, but I know like Bradner did a master class where he cut Sinnoh from his list, stuff like that. I uh, just from like looking at limitless tournaments, I would go down the list of like people playing Dragon. It seemed like half of them were cutting Sinnoh. Um, also, Gardevoir didn't do that well, and like a lot of Gardevoir lists were playing Enhanced. Like without Enhanced or Sinnoh, it's fine. Uh, Charizard was cutting Sinnoh and Enhanced. So how'd that turn out for you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so it just felt like as a whole, like a lot of people were disrespecting Lugia. Like I didn't think there was going to be a lot of Sinnohs and Hammers in people's list this weekend. And for the most part, I was correct. Like my top four opponent, I think, was the only person I played against with any special energy hate. Um, I don't know. Just on paper, like Lugia's matchup spread really insane. Like the only two decks that someone could flip over where I didn't feel comfortable would literally be like Iron Thorns or like Maridon. Um, and like, I just didn't think people were going to play Iron Thorns. Like no one likes playing that deck. Like, especially the more casual player base. It's like, if you're paying to go to regionals, like you want to have fun, like you don't play Iron Thorns. So, I mean, it had like a one and a half percent meta share. Uh, Maradon, I just also thought like, one, it's not that popular of a deck. And two, like Charizard was really hyped going to this tournament as was Raging Bolt. Uh, so I'm just like on paper, like Maradon just doesn't make too much sense to me as a deck. And I was even saying that on our last week on the aggro deck episode, um, so I didn't think he would show up in numbers. I think it was around like six and a half percent. Like even Jesse Parker didn't play Maridon. So I think that speaks to its I position as a crazy. play in the meta. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so basically the way it ended up being like only like 8% of the meta was like decks I didn't think I could beat. Um, otherwise, like someone flips over Drago, I felt favored. Someone flips over Charmander, I felt favored. Someone flips over Moon, flips over Bolt, I felt favored. Um, so just all these matchups I just like, I felt really good about. Um, and like, I know Lugia can be inconsistent, um but we can get into my list later but like i tried to build it as consistent as possible i pretty much played no techs um and i do really think lugia has like i know people say it's a bot deck but there's lots of maneuverability with it like you have like setting up checkmate boards like how you allocate your energies how you use your legacy um when to bench lumini on and when not to so uh the deck still has some agency and i think just honestly like i'm a lugia bot at my core you know like my uh comeback to the game in the modern era was i started seeing the most success with lugia um so it's a deck i'm comfortable with as well even if i didn't practice it that much leading up to the event it's like my my lugia skills are, are still there in the in the back of my mind they're right? always there they're always there yeah, like i'm a lugia there. bot for life right so yeah. that's kind of like thought think, process on why i picked it i think there's a lot of maneuverability now with lugia i think it do, does get a lot of slack um i think at one point it was a quote, quote unquote a bot deck i really do believe that but i think now there's there is skill to it and i think there was always a little bit of skill to it but now there feels like there's a lot of it and if you watch your top four match i think you displayed it perfectly um even with like searching for the dt to not knock out the, the moon or like little things like that understanding like what pekka run does um i think that kind of shows uh what, what what kind of skill you can put into it and like like you said charizard really underperformed um it was yeah. really hyped up but it, it really underperformed and all those Maridons I kind of expected would kind of shoot up just because of Charizard underperforming, but I guess you, you didn't hit either a Thorns or a Maridon, right? Nope, zero. Uh, I think literally my thought process too was like, I think Thorns and Maridon are bad decks. If I literally get to the top tables, like those decks won't exist. Um, and my assessment like was correct. I think day two, like like uh, someone like a couple seats down from me was playing Iron Thorns. So I'm like, all right, like hopefully that guy loses round one and then I'm just <laughs> like done with any nonsense like near me. So, and that's yeah. what happened. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's that's dope. I think a lot of people like really enjoy hearing that, like especially with how your preparation was, like going to the event and stuff. So I think the other side of this, and you touched on this briefly, would be like talk to us about your list choices. Like obviously your list wasn't um, wasn't flashy, really, no. um, pretty basic. Uh, but talk to us what the justification was for that. Yeah, I mean, um, I think 
Lugia as a deck, everyone knows it has a reputation for being a brick. Um, so to me, my thought process is when the deck sets up, it legitimately is like the most powerful deck in the format, in my opinion. Um, so I'm like, I don't need to play tech cards because while they're really powerful when you get them, like I don't get to use them if I'm not even set up in the first place. Um, so like I decided to run Squawk in my list. Um, I ran the Mezagozas over the Jamming Towers. I didn't run stuff like Bundle. I went four Research, four Boss. I even put Jacques in my deck. That was my last spot. I was like between Bundle and Jacques. And I'm glad I put Jacques in the deck. Um, and I just like trusted myself. I'm like, you know what? Like if I'm playing games of Pokemon, like I trust my abilities as a player, like to get it done. Um, and even like if you like don't trust yourself, I guess, like you just want to like, set up and give yourself a chance, right? Um, yep. So that's kind of what my thought process was. Like uh, I took basically my base list, I think was the uh what's yuho's brother's name uh from worlds constas i think oh, uh from, from Consta, yeah from worlds uh he didn't play squawk so i put squawk for the bundle and then i switched the then like, great balls to nest ball and then i found a spot for Jacques. i can't remember what i did but anyway so i just like kind of like okay like i like this cookie cutter consistent um and i gave the list to to another senior um to jesse and he got second in senior so if you go on limitless now the list is second second <laughs> master seniors from baltimore <laughs> pretty good pretty yeah. good um that's awesome yeah uh so how much did you find squawk helped that was something i was curious about personally yeah squawk is interesting so like i'd say i maybe only used it like 10 percent of my games but like the games i used squawk was like the difference between losing and winning um, I think yeah. the other thing with Squawk that's nice is you can nest ball for it. So like part of the reason I switched to nest balls is because I played Squawk. I was also playing like the Weird Ear. Um, so a lot of people play Carmine in Lugia, and like I just I don't know I'm just not a fan of Carmine. Like she feels super weak. Like it always sucks to like Lumineon turn one for Carmine. Um, so I like Squawk because it's a similar concept where like instead of Ultra Balling for Lumineon for Carmine, you can just Ultra Ball or nest ball for Squawk. Use it. It's actually more powerful than Carmine. And then if it's you're on a second, like you can even use another supporter. Uh, so if one play I pulled off a couple times was like I would use Jacques for double Archeops and I would squawk. Uh, Pretty good. And like just instantly set up my, my game, right? So I, mm -hmm. I really like the squawk. Um, again, it's just like one of those things, like it's just another out to help you set up. So one thing the deck really, really struggles with when you go first is getting turn two double chops because you don't get the opportunity to read the wind. You don't get the opportunity to play supporter, like research to set yourself up. Um, so squawk is kind of like playing that research on turn one and just giving you like the best chance possible of getting turn two double chops which when the deck gets it uh you're really rolling right so uh, i really like squawk uh, i suggest everyone plays it in the deck um i thought about playing fez as well um i'll kind of talk about why i didn't play that so fez as a card is really good um but in a lot of aggro matchups like you have to limit how many two prizes you put on the board because like if they just go two 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 you lose so normally like you can put three and one of them has to have a legacy at some point um and the other matchups fez is really good is like protecting against iono against stuff like drago stuff like charizard uh, even stuff like Gardevoir, because um, they're going to try and, like, Iono knock out, go around Gift. But the problem with those matchups is all those decks either play Countercatcher, or in Drago's case, Prime Catcher, and they can go, like, V-Star, Prime Catcher, Iono. And then they can just knock out the Fez on the turn they're, they're going to do that and Iono you. Um, and then against the aggro decks, like, it's pretty hard for them to, like, ignore Gifts if you put them down, because you put them on your two prizes, like, they have to knock them out. Or if you put on Chinchino, they have to knock it out. So those matchups, I felt like Gifts could just be my draw engine. And I just felt like Fez wasn't high value enough for me. If you do play Fez, because I still like the card, uh, you have to commit a gift to it. So if your opponent tries to do those plays where they knock out the Fez, you get to draw anyways. Uh, but sometimes you just don't have time to, to commit that. So um, that's kind of why I picked Squawk as my support Pokemon over the Fez. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And like, I didn't watch your whole day, obviously. <laughs> uh, but from what I did watch, Fez actually could have been quite good for you in those couple situations. So like, you definitely see the utilization of both. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. Um, oh, I also have to apologize for my voice. I don't have a voice right now. So I, I apologize <laughs> to all y'all who have to listen to this. You were cheering too much at the um, Ravens game? Yeah, it's it's like Coors Light and Ravens game one and Neil <laughs> Zero right now. Uh <laughs> We had uh we had a pretty good time and then we saw Kieran was in uh is in top four and we we left before the final drive. Uh the Raiders actually won off a off a field goal, but we left early because we had to we had to see the boy play Pokemon. So <laughs> um that you know, priorities priority strike sometime. And uh yeah, the I, I mean like there's arguments to squawk, there's arguments to Fez. I mean I like I like your list for what it is because I think Lugia takes a lot of a lot of good matchups around the board. So if you just play the game, uh, typically you're going to have a good time. Yeah. That was kind of the idea with Drago too, going to Worlds, right? Yep. You play consistently, you play the game, you're going to beat most things. Yeah, another point for Squawk over Fez is uh, Fez like is like a reactive card. Like The game has to be flowing. Like You have to already have been set up to start using it. And, like Squawk helps you get there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, The other card that I wanted to play was the Bundle. I think Bundle's a super strong card. 
Um, similar to when you play Chen Pao, like you can push something out of the active and like get a like a hands target or just like another two prizer against um like uh, what's it called Drago. It's really good if they start Cleffa. Um, then there's just like random scenarios where I'm like, this is really good. Like you play against Lugia and like they have something useless active, like a Machina or something. You can pop up a Lugia or a Lumineon. So that's that was literally my last cut the night before. I cut that for the Jacques. Um, just because I'm like, all right, you know what? Bundle doesn't help me set up. Bundle's fantastic once the game gets going. True. Um, but I, I would have won my round nine if I played Bundle. But but like I would have lost so many rounds if I didn't play Jacques. So I think you also play four trick. boss. Like that's the other thing too, right? Yeah, you could cut a boss for Bundle, but I mean, boss is just broken. Um, like boss is just a great. It's card your win to con get. into Drago a lot of the time, right? Like, yeah, like you literally just go, game you just go like boss, Ogre Pond, boss, Ogre Pond, uh, boss, Ogre Pond. Actually, you know what's insane? What's uh, over 16 rounds, if I include my top cut rounds, I did not play against Reggie Drago. Really? Yeah, I didn't play against it once, which <laughs> it was the most popular deck both days, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. I just completely avoided it. Uh, it's, like, it's a matchup I was fine playing against, so I was just, like, shocked that I didn't, I didn't face one. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know what Ogre Pawn is, but, I mean, <laughs> it, that's pretty cool either way. Uh, did uh, Did you ever think about... I mean, so so what do you think are your... We obviously discussed about Murata and Iron Thorns. Is there anything else you actually don't want to see? No, it's literally just decks, like the evolution decks that play Enhanced or Sinnoh. That's for the other thing. Right. Like, I actually okay. think I was, yeah. like, favored into Henry. Um, I just didn't get, like, strong turn twos, and, like, he got Rare Candy card of our both games, and I prized Legacy the last one. But, like, if they play Enhanced or Sinnoh, the game becomes very difficult because they go, they can shut off the Legacy, uh, they can shut mm -hmm. off Gift the turn they want to take a knockout. Um, so I think, like, if we had another Regionals in this format... Um, is Lil this format or is it, I think it's not. I think it's the next set. Um, uh, I do I do think Lugia would be a much worse play because I just assume everyone would start playing Sinnoh and Enhanced again. Um, but for this tournament specifically, like I did not expect people playing Evolution decks uh, to play those cards. So I think all the matchups were fine. Uh, it was kind of crazy how literally a one card tech can like completely swing the deck. Like in my top four match, I didn't know Emmett played Enhanced Hammer. So I was just sitting in game one. I'm like, oh, I have him checkmated. And I'm like, why is this guy still playing? He enhanced hammered me. I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, so that like completely yeah. flips like the matchup from like pretty heavy in my favor to like probably 50-50 at that point. Um, and I think that was on us a little bit. We found out after you started the game. So no one was able to uh, to warn you about such things. Well, to be honest, like this, um, like when I play tournaments, like I don't concern myself too much with stuff like that. Like I'm just like, all right, I play who's in front no. of me. I don't like scout and people yeah. are like, oh, this person's playing this, this, and this. Like I knew he was playing Roaring Moon, but like I probably could have asked like someone. They would probably would have told me, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's on that's on the boys for not doing scouting <laughs> for you. Um, yeah, that, that, and, and we've talked about this so many times. So like, some formats are reactive, some formats are proactive. Like th like you think about one card inclusions that entirely destroy a deck. You think about Spear Tomb against Mew or something like that. Like they're in a format where no one's really respecting your deck. Like you're obviously gonna have a way better chance of winning. Um, Gardevoir and Lugia in the finals, I think, screams that. Uh, there's a lot of hype towards Charizard, a lot of hype towards Drago, and like both of those decks didn't really even sniff a chance at, at winning this tournament. So you made a great medical. Uh Unreal Medical. A lot of people weren't really expecting Lugia to be good, and, and Lugia had a had a fantastic, fantastic weekend. Um, were there any uh like was there any like rounds that were kind of scuffed for you? Like I saw you had ultra ball double chops both times I saw you on stream. Like did uh... was there times where you weren't hitting that hot? Like Yeah, like I think going on? both my losses to Charizard, like both of them were like insane lower rolls. Like against Brent game one, I'm literally like, okay, like his hand was like six cards or something. I'm like, he needs like these four specific cards, or I have checkmate. And like he had Pidgeot, so I know he had one of them, and then he like had all four of them. Like I'm like, okay. Uh then game three, like I researched and I just had to hit Chinchino and I missed. But looking back, like I maybe I like I did primal turbo first to thin. Um, but like looking back, like maybe I shouldn't have done that because I got Iona the turn before. Um I think in the moment I was scared that I was gonna draw a handful of energies and then I wouldn't be able to Chinchino. Um, but I think I had enough left that I didn't have to do it. Like, it was still, like, an insane low roll. I probably had, like, an 85, 90% chance of hitting, and I missed. Um, but, like, it's a, it's a really great, because, like, in the moment, I was like, wow, how did I lose that game? Like, that's an insane low roll, which it was, but with reflection, I'm like, oh, I actually could have played even better and probably made, like, a 95% chance or something, so. How many cards were I on to the bottom? I don't even remember. I'll have to go look after, <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, because yeah, that's important. Like, yeah. And did you turbo four energies or two? Yeah, four, or? four. Okay, uh, I feel like I feel like you did the right thing, unless that Iona was a huge chunk of cards, which it wasn't because you needed to win the game, right? Yeah. So it's probably two, well, one, something like that. I don't know, Azul told me like on, on Twitter or whatever that I shouldn't have done that. Uh, so apparently not. Statistically, though, I don't think that makes sense because like unless the amount of cards you're putting on the bottom is four well, or more. I think it was more than four cards. Um, but I think the, oh, what, what matters is just how many energy you had left because you have to like think about like the scenario, the combinations where you draw like too many energies and then you can't put them on yeah. the team. So you need five to knock out Charizard. 
But I had mm -hmm. one in my hand, I think, so I would have had to only get two from the deck if I researched. Uh, or wait, wait, no, I, had, I think my Chinchino had nothing on it. I can't, I can't remember how many Chinchino. No, I had two, I think. Anyways, I could have maybe played better in that one. <laughs> and then, like, round nine, I played yeah. Charizard again. Like, I had one, like, just complete Lugia Brick game. Then I had another one where it was, like, a research scenario similar. Like, I just needed boss for the next turn, energy, another supporter to just draw an energy. I just completely whiffed um, after my opponent, like, let me back into the game um, with, like, a collapse. And I covered my, like, Lugia. Um, so, yeah, like, my two losses, like, in day one were literally just, like, it just felt like low-roll games. Um, but, yeah, I could have played better against Brent, potentially. So, um yeah, but I think that's a great example of like the magnification of what makes great players great. Uh, it's little like tiny percentage points that maybe like common players would kind of overlook. And like, I think that's one thing that I like to tell people, especially who are picking up the game. It's like, it's important to really understand like every little minute percentage point does matter. Um, and I think yeah. watching stream this weekend, you see that. Like, you see that a lot. Oh, yeah. Like, what's it called? I'm just going to pull up my like notes phone, my notes on my phone here. So when I play tournaments, I just like write every round. And if something interesting happens, like I write it down. Uh, like if I messed up or something, like guys a journalist. Um, <laughs> so yo, the crazy thing you asked me if something was scuffed. My first six rounds, I went twelve zero in individual games, which with Lugia, I Pretty feels good. like actually really hard to do. But like, yeah, for example, like I played against a Palkia like Greninja EX Dustnor deck, and I wrote like in my notes, like I almost threw game one by like uh, forgetting that like he can use Shinobi Blade for weakness on my like weird deer. So I forgot Greninja was a fighting type because I have learned that. <laughs> I forgot. You I was, see like, water energies. Oh yeah, because yeah, it's broken. I'm like, oh wait. Um, yeah. And then, like, uh, yeah, actually, that Zard game, I said, right, low world, which I did. But I'm like, oh, like, maybe I could have, like, Ultra Ball to make my hand smaller the previous turn. So I would have drawn, like, three extra cards off Gift. I'm like, I could have done that. If I assume he, he knocked out something else, but I'm like, I could have done that. Um, and then, like, again, like, I wrote here, like, round 12 against Rage and Bolt. I, could, I was still one, but I'm like, I could have made a checkmate with Ursa Luna in game three, but I was scared. I was playing too much around, like, Enhanced Hammer, which I'm like, I probably didn't need to do that. Um, yeah, I think it's great to always be, like, reflective of, of how you can improve um so yeah actually round my winning in against uh friend of the pod or fall like i basically almost threw in game three because i forgot about peck around almost the, the situation i played around on stream like i was going on attack with chinchino for two prizes i'm like oh wait like i asked him like can i boss instead he's like yeah so like super nice guy he probably if he called a judge he probably could have like argued that i i went too deep into the attack phase uh because i like i was just like basically saying the attack name and then i like stopped i'm like oh wait i actually want to boss this um, so almost made a mistake actually, there too. So I actually don't know how the interaction works. Like, do you have to say the full attack? Uh, name? I think it, like I had like my intent to attack, so I think like I would lose the argument. Yeah. Um, or falls like fantastic, fantastic guy. Yeah, fantastic dude. Um, so very lucky with that. Um, so yeah, like honestly, and like I I love when I'm on stream because I can go back and watch the games. Um, you guys like clip me like a Zool commentate my games, which is great to have another pair of eyes. Uh, so like for example, like that game two against the Moon, where I did like that double turbo play, which like. Everyone's like, oh, that's Giga Brain. Like, Azul found an even better player. It's like, oh, you could have fished and like Aqua returned. Then I had a double turbo in my hand. So even if Chops went down, I could have bossed after. Um, so even then, like, where I found like what I thought in the moment were like really good players, the best line, like, there's like still like micro improvements you can you can always be making. Um, so yeah. it, it's like great. Like, you, like, like, I'm just saying, like, for everyone listening, like, don't always blame luck. Like, even games where it feels like you get absurdly unlucky, um, there's probably things you could have done to, to improve. So. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't know, like I look back at my games all the time and sometimes I forget to, to write down notes. So what you're doing is actually pretty helpful. Yeah. Uh, keep all your notes in one place and kind of refer back to them. I think it's a good piece of advice. Yeah, because like I, I work with a lot of like kids and just like students in general. It's like I hate when they come up to me and after like, oh, I bricked. I'm like, well, no, like tell me exactly what happened. Could you have done yeah, it differently? Like something happened. Yeah. So I'm like, you're not learning anything if you just say, oh, I bricked every game. I'm like, like yeah, like sometimes that's going to happen. But like most of the time, like Pokemon is such a complex game. You're doing so many actions a game. Like there's probably like even just slight adjustments you can make that that really help you get better uh so just holding yourself yeah. accountable i think is really important for growth as a player that's sick yeah so here's the most important question of the episode um was going this deep in the tournament worth missing the ravens game and paying <laughs> 150 bro. usd for an uber bro if i didn't make day two i probably wouldn't have gone to the ravens game one because a lot of my really my, a lot of my juniors i coach and seniors like they were doing really well at the tournament so i would have wanted to be there to support them but also bro like i don't care about the ravens that's a lot of money bro i don't uh, care about the ravens but i care <laughs> about football yeah, but lit. <laughs> the Uber was worth it. So for, for anyone who doesn't know, so I actually flew. So you can't fly direct from Toronto to Baltimore. Um, I could have drove, but like, um, honestly, like, I don't like driving that long. It's like uncomfortable or whatever. So like I drove, or I flew to Washington because uh, I took an early morning flight on Friday so I could spend the day downtown going to Smithsonian's National Mall, seeing all the cool stuff. Uh, I've been there when I was younger, but I'm like, I, as an adult, I thought it'd be cool to go back. Um, 
random thing, but I went to like the African American History Museum and they had the coolest sports exhibit, like one of my favorite museum exhibits I've ever been. So if you ever go to Washington, highly recommend that museum in general, but that exhibit specifically. Um, but anyway, so I trained from Washington to Baltimore. It's like around an hour. Uh, but you also take the Washington Metro to the airport. So like in total, it probably takes like two and a half hours to like train. Um, and I booked, when I was booking my return flight, I was going to book one at like 7 p.m., but I'm like, oh, what if I make finals? So I'm like, okay, let's book the 10 p.m. flight. That's uh, I like had that much belief. That's just how much belief I have in myself as a player, right? Um, so yeah, so I, the day two, like top cut took forever because of asymmetrical cut and like everyone's going to time. So by the time I finished finals, I'm like, okay, I don't have enough time to, to train home or back to the airport because the train costs like $20 total. Um, and the airport's like an hour, 20 minute drive. So I had to order an Uber and it was like, I think with like conversion, like it's like basically 200 Canadian dollars. Uh, and I had no one to split it with. So I had to just soak the cost. And it was a great trip. So like the guy pulls up to pick me up and like, I think on Uber, it doesn't tell the driver where they're going until they pick you up. So it shows the, the airport, like the guy was not happy. Yeah. So I assume he's from Baltimore. He doesn't want to go all that way out and come back. But eventually I convinced him to go. Um, and then like halfway on, like I'm already like cutting it really close. Like with the projected time, I would have had like, I think 35 minutes until boarding. The guy just randomly goes, oh, I'm really sorry, sir, but I need to stop for gas. I'm like, okay. Did he need gas? Yeah, he was like running on empty. So like we had to stop okay, for gas, right. like got off the highway. Like the Uber app's like, are you okay? Like you're going off route. So we get back, we get to the airport. The guy takes like the wrong turn to go to departure. So we had to go all the way around again. Uh, so I'm like in the airport and like, I'm like rushing to get to security. I'm like praying that like the line's not long. And the line wasn't long, but the people in front of me, the guy was diabetic and they had to like test all his liquids because he brought some through. Oh my God. And my bag got flagged because I had Pokemon cards. So I'm just like staring at like my watch pretty much. Like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, but luckily I got through, I got to my gate like 20 with 20 minutes to spare. Uh, I even had time to take a quick deck list photo on one of the chairs in the, everyone was like looking at me like, what is this guy doing? But uh, yeah, I'd look at you too. But anyways, to answer your point, one off topic there, it was worth the $200 uh, because I won quite a bit of money this weekend. So that's what I was going to say. Like, that's always my mentality. I always book the early flight and I'm like, bro, if I get seven bands in my bank account, respectfully, I don't really care about having to rebook it. Yeah. But flight. I would have had to re like stay the night too. Like, which I didn't really want to mm, do. So mm, yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. I was actually looking at flights on the way home, too, because after the Ravens game, I was like, guys, I'm, like, absolutely calibrated <laughs> here. I'm having a good time. I'm just like, I just want to fly home, you know, peacefully. It was 450 Canadian dollars to, yeah. to get home. Well, One way. Because you, you're booking it last minute. That's why. So. Well, I was even looking a few days before because my soccer team that I coach had their first game uh, uh, 9 p.m. on Sunday. Hmm. And I was like, hmm, maybe I can get home after the Ravens game. It was still 450 yeah. Um, so not a very, uh, Canadian friendly place and most places aren't. Um, I think actually my highlight of the weekend was, uh, listening to the commentators make everything about Canada. Oh bro. They the love finals. that bro. It's like, it's like, Oh, Canada, Canada, Canada. Hey, at least they say my name right now. Planet, bro. Dude. Like, <laughs> what is this man? It's like, he said something about like you being like drenched in maple syrup. I'm like, this is crazy, bro. Like, Stereotyping. what are we doing here? Yeah. What are we doing here? <laughs> like, we're literally like, there's someone, um, someone around me who was talking about like, yo, um, you guys are from Canada? Like, is it like hella cold there? And I'm like, yeah, like, I guess, right? Like, whatever. Um, and a man's like, yo, you drove here? That's at least 22 hours. I'm like, okay, man. Like, I just told you I'm from Toronto. Like, I swear, <laughs> we're not that far away, man. Yeah. It's I mean, I think they're playing too on the narrative. I think like Canadians have won like the first regional like the past couple of years. So, because uh, Ashada yeah. won and Raymond won, all that. So, Rowan one as well. We're, we, we, I yeah. guess we're historically built different. So yeah, I, guess I think Landon's won a regional in the past couple of years. So yeah, we've had a lot of Canadian winners. Yeah. Cyrus won an AIC. So um, yeah, we had three Canadians oh. in top eight. Uh, yeah. So I mean, like, I mean, I always say it, but like Toronto, greatest region in the world for Pokemon, man. All three GTA. Uh, yeah. So. Thank God for best finish limit four, man. <laughs> <laughs> League cups are sweaty, sweaty. Um, awesome. Okay, so we went super off topic there, but I think that's uh, that's the the best part of our podcast. Um, so uh, final question here for you, and then we'll move into kind of like what the new format was of uh, Baltimore and stuff, and kind of give our thoughts about that. But how do you feel about the like Lugia going forward? Is there anything that really sticks out for you? I know new sex coming out. Um, not really. Like I don't think Lugia gains anything really. Um, I mean, it seems like Dragapult's getting popular again, which is a good matchup for Lugia. Um, Raging Bolt seems to be popular, which again, good matchup for Lugia um charizard gets briar now uh shout out camille for for talking to me about this uh camille, today bro. uh so like yeah. it's really hard because if you're at or sorry if you're at two and they're at three they can now uh briar win the game if they play dust they can also like force you to to that as well 
Um, so I haven't tested any games new format. Just this is all theory. I'm like Charizard actually might be a tougher matchup now. Um, but honestly, Charizard's like a brick now, right? Like people are playing people are playing four energies in Charizard. Yeah. I saw a list of four energies. I saw that. So, I saw that. Uh, yeah, but I think Lugia is fine. It just comes down to again, like are people respecting it? Um, if they're not, fantastic play like this weekend. I mean, we saw three in top eight, um, which is the high and had like one of the highest conversions into day two. Uh, it became the second most popular deck, I think, and it was like the fourth or fifth most popular day one. So, um, no, I think the deck is still good. Yeah. Um, I always say if you play Lugia, you have to be ready for getting some Lugia hands, and you have to make sure the meta is right for it. But no, Lugia, I think, will at worst be a tier two deck. Um, yep. Kind of similar to how it is now. Um, oh, also, before we move yeah. on, I have to give a shout sure. out to Drew, Drew Allen, a uh, fellow Canadian friend of the pod. It's his birthday. It's his birthday today? Yeah, it's oh, his not, birthday. That's not why I was giving him a shout, a shout out, but happy birthday, Drew. It's Monday when we're recording this. Happy birthday, Drew. Uh, he, told, he was like pushing me to play Lugia, and he told me the deck's name, you have to put it on Arcane Eyes, no feds, with the lightning bolt emoji, because uh, the feds are Iron Thorns and Maridon. So I put that mm. for good luck to keep them away, and I didn't hit any feds. So shout out, Drew, for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, me and Dadton were looking at that. We're like, I, I don't really know. Like, you're our dog, and we were both like, we don't understand what the hell this guy's talking about. Like, I don't know how a random person's gonna know what you're talking about. Well, I put the lightning bolt emoji, yeah. so I thought people could understand. No, now that I think about it, like Maridon is pretty oppy. Like, if I was to think of like a federal agent, like that guy's just like a walking robot. I yeah. don't like that guy. Well, uh, so Trevor Reed, also fellow Canadian, friend of the pod, he got top eight at EUIC twenty twenty three with Lugia, and I think back then the feds was Duraludon or something, and they're like, that's why we yeah, put yeah. that there. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he he's a perennial Lugia player too. Actually. Oh, he's a uh, Lugia yeah. bot. <laughs> I wasn't gonna be the one to say it. I mean, all, um, I think all of us like we we don't we don't consider it like demeaning. We're all proud Lugia bots. All of us who who play Lugia, so y'all embrace it. Yep. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, to your point about Charizard, that's the one thing I want to touch on. Like, it felt like it really underperformed, and a lot of it, like I saw that list of four fire energy. I was seeing some junk in these lists. Uh, it feels like Dustnor took it back, like took it forward a step in terms of what you can do, but took it back two steps because your deck just like doesn't work half the time. And I learned this when we were uh, calibrated off the Applebee's on Saturday night. Went to Applebee's, got the buckets, got the two four twenty six. Like we were living good. Went back to the room to watch UFC, and we're like, "Yo, let's money match." And the only deck I had was Charizard. And bro, like I kept drawing like Dustclops and Dustnor. I'm like, "What's wrong? What happened to the Charizard I once knew?" <laughs> And I looked online, I saw Mans playing four fire energies, I was like, y'all have officially gotten too greedy with this damn deck. You know what else is crazy? Um, I see people playing like three Arvin like consistently in Charizard. I'm like, yo, I see that too. I'm like, don't you need yeah. that card to like start start playing the game? Like <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. It's like no consistency, just vibes. If you pop off, you pop off. Remember, I swear every time I play Charizard, like I make them go first, I'm like, all right, buddy pop and buddy pop, and I'm like, nice. Pretty good. It, uh, Lugia feels a lot like Drago in the sense where your deck is so inherently powerful if you set up, but you have times where you just simply don't. Well, um, yeah. Lots of similarities. The thing I like about Lugia is like when I win the flip, I'm actually like I don't even know if I want to go first or second. Like it's just actually random because like half the matchups you go first, half you go second. So a lot mm -hmm. of times like I would lose the flip and like my opponents would be like first, and I'm like okay, and like I can read the wind. And, like the other thing is if you go first, so you don't know how good your hand is. So sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah. if I went first, like I would have actually lost. I needed to go second. Um, so like honestly, like with the coin flip, I actually did not really care if I lost it normally because I'm just like, all right, whatever. Like I'll, 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 uh, I'll just get either first in a good matchup or I'll get the chance to go second. And a lot of matchups where you want to go second, like like Charizard or like even uh, yeah Charizard, like they'll pick blind first, for example. Um, so actually, no, they pick blind second. Me. Actually, never mind, never mind. Is there any matchup where they they pick the wrong one because they don't know your Lugia? I don't think there is actually, mm. but I mean, I feel fine going second in most matchups. So. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to have that freedom to do whichever. It reminds me a lot of Lost Box, too. Like, yeah. He didn't really care. He'd just go first or second. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so the new format of the regionals, I know a lot of people uh, had their thoughts about it, for sure. 7-2 to go into day two, and then only four rounds to kind of differentiate yourself from the rest. So what I know my initial thoughts are kind of like, I like it. I like the fact that you need a bit more to go to day two, but I do think it's a little unforgiving mm -hmm. uh, in general. But you don't need as much to go right for you, I think. Overall, with less rounds, like you can kind of get away with one round of brick in or whatever it is. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts. So, what do you think about the new regional format? Like, do you like it? Do you not like it? Kind of, what do you think can improve here? Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm biased because I did very well with it, but I don't know. Yes. I think overall, I like it. Um, yeah. Like you said, I think now that the tournaments are so large, um, I think it's nicer that we have a smaller day too. 
Um, like we had 129 people on day two, so one person still missed 128, but uh, hopefully we, we alleviate that a little bit. Um, and also, I always thought it was really lame to like ID at 6-2 and like make day two. Like that doesn't feel right, like a competition. Um, like it feels more like you have to earn your spot in day two. Um, and also like, I have to figure out if it's easier or not to make top cut now, because before you could go 12-3, and three. now you have to go 11-2, but you only have to win four games in a row if you start at 7-2, uh, like, which is like yeah. what I did. Um, you probably have to play the ASIM game, or like not maybe, like or you probably like maybe. Um, but I think it feels better, like because if you were six two one, you always had to go six zero to make day two, which was really really difficult, right? Um, so which is actually harder than than this format. Um, I do understand that the main gripe people have is that they feel the pressure that they need a gentleman's agreement like every round. Like people were saying, like even from round one, I heard a lot of people offering gentleman's agreements. Um, and those always don't feel great because you don't really know your opponent. Like, it's hard to know if you can trust them or not. Um, also, this feels weird to have games kind of end like that. Because, um, like, if you tie, like, it's fine. But, like, as soon as you lose, ties also are basically a loss because you need to go clean 7-2. Yes. It's very difficult to go 6-0-3, um, right? So, I mean, ties are okay to carry day two. Like, they help you dodge the asymmetrical cut. Like, it helps you make those break points for top 32 and top 16. Um, but yeah, I'd say the weakness of this system is the gentleman's angle. And I think we're in a very quick format right now. So I think it's fine if the tie rate was pretty low. Um, part of that I think is because people are doing gentlemen's and playing faster. Um, but I also think it's mainly because the format's a lot faster. So if we ever go to a format where it's like slower, I think this, the format we have for regionals now is going to be a lot worse. Um, just because people are going to tie so much more often. Um, yeah. But- that yeah, was one thing I was thinking thoughts. about too. Like hitting all those kickers is crazy. So I went six three, and uh, eighteen match points wasn't enough for two fifty six or even anything even close yeah. to it. It was like three hundred something, and to me that is absolutely bonkers. But so much of that is attributed to the fact that people aren't taking ties, right? Yeah. So you take those like one point, those two point yields off the board, those two point match yields. So I think it's crazy. I I like it, but I don't <laughs> like it. I think there's a lot of pressure, like you said, on people to gentlemen's really early, and I, I'm a fan of it. Like I never like tying anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll gentlemen's from round one, no problem. But it puts a lot of pressure on people to a trust their opponent and b like be trustworthy, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of situations where, let's face it, like you might be down in a situation where you feel like you're you should win. Your opponent thinks they should win. Then you enter this scenario where like I saw a lot of people flipping coins. I saw a lot of like crazy stuff going on so uh maybe don't do that yeah don't do that uh, that's a advice. that's a fast way to get dq and potentially banned but <laughs> yeah it's not a good idea i don't like it um yeah. but yeah so it's interesting and i think there's gonna be a lot of stuff going to that and like maybe there's some there is a spot to open some discourse about should we go back to the old tiebreaker rules where the player with less prizes in game three won the round yeah i think uh, maybe that's the solution you introduce some problems with like stall decks ever play against each other because mm-hmm. then like the tournament just gets hauled up for like ever so like I think ties are like a necessary evil at this point. Um, I mean, again, the solution is always just to go to like 60 minutes, best of three, or we've talked about before, like just look at your prize cards before the game starts. To me, that's the easiest solution they can implement right now. Um, that doesn't force like us to like have the venues for longer, longer days. Um, and while like prize checking is like technically a skill of the game, like honestly, like I don't really care that I get an advantage that I'm better at prize checking than my opponent. Like a good opponent, I assume is going to know their prizes. Um, so I'd rather just let's look at them. Like let's gain back that extra. Honestly, over a three game set, that's probably an extra like eight, even maybe ten minutes, because deck searches can be really long at the start, right? If both players do it, uh, maybe a little less than that. But that's a lot of time to get back. So to me, that's the easiest solution to to speed up the game here. Well, the other thing too is like they're printing all these cards that speed up the game as well. So like Briar, like Iron Hands, like stuff yeah. that is like taking extra prizes for fun. Like it kind of feels like they're they're realizing a little bit we were in a bit of a pickle. Um, the other thing it favors is it favors people who play faster, which yeah. personally I'm okay with. Like I think some people take way too long playing this game to do little things. Like, you should not be overthinking a nest ball and stuff like that. Like just play the game at a at a good pace and you normally don't have any issues. But it's interesting. Like this is the first time we've kind of gone through a full turn with it. I know we had it with for worlds, but worlds is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. This is super, super interesting. And I haven't looked at the numbers yet, but I have seen like there were some like people at 16 points who got the same amount of points with as people as eight at 18 points and like stuff like that. Like I think that's so fascinating. Um yeah. the one thing I want to touch on real quick that I thought was a great touch and, and something I really enjoyed was uh the the uh pack prizing for everyone all the way down to 512. I thought that was awesome. Like, it feels good to, like, have something in your hand, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's good. I mean, like, we've always said, like, there's no reason Pokemon can't just print more packs. It costs them almost nothing. 
Uh, but I was talking to some parents and like uh, juniors and seniors they like nerfed packs apparently for them this year. Where I'm like, that's the division oh, that really? cares the most about packs. Um, so I'm like, I don't know why they got less, but uh, but yeah, I think packs in general pay them out. Why not? Um, like I said, it's very low cost to Pokemon, makes people more satisfied. Um, so yeah. like much. I think another thing that I think was bad about prizing was like you could make it to your winning in for top eight um, and lose, and then just whiff top thirty two and whiff money completely. Um, so like I think the percentage of people who get prize money at these tournaments is like I think it's like less than one percent with how many people we have now. Um, oh yeah, which doesn't feel right to me. Um, so that really sucks. Um, I guess one of the arguments for having ties in your records is if you have a tie, like one match point more, like so many people just have clean records now that like that one extra point actually pushes you ahead of a lot of people. But um, yeah, I think they need to, again, we've always said like make day two promos or something or like bring, they used to give cash to top 64. I don't know why they took that away. Um, or some standardized prizing for yeah. day two, I think would be nice to add back. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's weird. I got to do the math. Um, I was thinking about it a lot too. Like with less rounds, there's less variance, right? In general. So people mm -hmm. have, like you said, cleaner records. There's cleaner plus threes or whatever. Like, um, but what I find so interesting is like with people not taking ties and less rounds, you create this thing where it's, like you said, so polarizing. So you win, you're in top eight or you lose and you're walking home with 18 booster packs and a pat on the back, right? Like feels pretty bad. Um, yeah. I, I don't I don't love it, but I think there's I don't know, I guess I guess this is what we live with now. And not all regionals are gonna be this big as time goes on. Obviously they're gonna they're gonna fall yeah. off a little bit. Um maybe not a whole lot, but yeah, it's 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 super interesting. Um so let's talk about the top eight real quick. Let's talk talk about kinda let's reflect on like what we kinda not so predicted would do well, but what the general consensus was. Like so I look at this top eight. I see Ogremon Neuverth. Uh, Neuvern, sorry. And I see three Lugias, a Roaring Moon, and a Gardevoir. And then at ninth, you see a Palkia Dusnor. Yep. Um, do you like this? Do you like this, like, wide open, there's a billion decks format? Um, if the matchups are close, I do. And I think this format, the matchups are pretty close. Um, but I think it was cool. We saw a lot of unique decks. Like, um, like the Palkia Dusnor deck, very unique. Uh, the Neuvern Ogre Pond control deck, very unique. Um, Jeremy played like a Snor Snorlax Pidgeot control deck. It was pretty unique. So um, I think since the meta like was so solved almost, like the popular decks like were so popular, like there was, there was a lot of room for creativity for decks like these. So um, I think it's cool. Everyone was saying this format sucks, like us included, like we were kind of harping on it a bit, but it shows like there's creativity like for, for, and like if you're creative and you really put the time in, you can break it. So yeah, I think it was, it was actually really cool that at this tournament specifically we had this kind of meta, uh, but at Worlds, I think it was kind of like a lot more boring than, than what we're seeing here. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's basically all I have for my side. Uh, if you're new here to the Shift Gear podcast, um, we're happy to have you. Um, thank you for being here. We talk about a lot of junk a lot of the time, but we tried We actually were pretty well behaved today, I'd say. Yeah, very um, in depth. Really... Very focused. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add, off, add on before we signed off? Uh, I just want to shout out the GOAT, Jeremy Gibson, for making Top Cut. Uh, yeah. For whenever him and I are rooming together, this guy just makes top cuts. So uh, I was sad that he lost his his like ASIM game. Uh, I couldn't he couldn't keep going to play me again. But uh, yeah, other than that, shout out to all the support I had this weekend. Uh, tons from listeners, friends, family, just everybody it was it was awesome uh, to see. Uh, honestly, puts a smile on my face. Um, so yeah, shout out to everybody. Yeah, the even the picture I took of you where you were looking mad. <laughs> yeah, through the. Yeah. Yeah, through the curtains. Bro, I just, like, saw you through the curtains. You look so pissed. I was like, yo, I'm taking a picture of this guy right now. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of jokes because I saw that Jeremy and you post in the, in the couch, and then Rowan responds, Anil and his bucket hat are more <laughs> iconic. And I said, hey, man, what can I say? Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll take those oh, small. If we're speaking about Twitter, like, I called you out, bro, about your Raging Bolt yeah, take. But you that were, was rude. You were right about day two, man. If you said day two, Raging Bolt fall off. <laughs> Yo, that was uncalled for, dog. But it's it's all good. It's all good. I'm I'm animal? just waiting. I'm waiting. Okay. You know what? I'm I'm gonna be the. You know what? I'm not gonna mm -hmm. retaliate. I'm mm -hmm. Not gonna retaliate. I'm gonna be nice. Go ahead, um, man. You, no, I I won't. Go ahead. I, I don't have anything to say right now. You just you almost just won a regional. How, okay. how am I gonna dog you? That's fair. That's can't fair. do it. Now Actually, I gotta win Louisville. Hmm. I'm not going to Louisville, so you can win that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I want to be the one interviewing you next time, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird actually, like being the being the interviewer of like some dude I do a podcast with every week. But that's his life. Bro, we need to, um, we need to get you a top eight, man. I need to have that episode where we can talk about your first top eight. We're getting there, man. Slowly, I've I've whiffed like four times now. But we're getting there. We're gonna get there. You're knocking on the door. It's gonna happen. 
Yeah. We're knocking on the door. All right. Yeah. It's going to happen. Everyone predict in the comments which tournament and Neil's going to get his first top eight. Okay. I like it. Um, one thing I want to shout out, shout out Target. Um, they had these Tic Tacs for like 87 cents, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, they were on sale for 50% off. So y'all Americans, like sometimes I realize that in Canada, we don't really have anything. Um, then I, like when I go down to the States, you guys have like Jimmy John's, you guys got Target, you guys got all this like cool stuff. And we're sitting up here with our garbage. So shout out Target, man. Um, Target's big. I, I don't like the golden arches down there. Y'all, I don't know what you guys are doing at McDonald's. Like the food quality is just so bad. But <laughs> Target, all the other food super fire yeah like um want to give what's up i was just say like just in general like not even just target like the candy section in america like i actually love because you guys have so many flavors more flavors than we do for all this stuff uh it's bad for my health whenever i go there but i'm always like treating myself to like different flavors of m&ms like stuff like that so <laughs> no dude we got back at like 3 a.m last night and i was telling my soccer team like am i gonna go play with you guys tonight or not like i thought i'd be dead right now and i am dead <laughs> but i've eaten so much junk food and i feel yes. so heavy from one weekend in in baltimore every regionals i go to go. man in the states always yeah. y'all eat good down there you do Almost eat good down good. there yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you know the city of baltimore though uh it was fun like it was honestly very different to what i expected like there's a lot of culture in that city that i think goes unsaid and uh camden yards i think walking through camden yards is one of the coolest things i've done in at a regional uh do you get a chance to walk through like the stadium yeah so like camden inside yards the stadium to, you can walk in the like right outside. Oh yeah, I walked right outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Camden Super Yards dope. seemed nice. Uh, where my Airbnb was wasn't the nicest, <laughs> but uh, no, it was fine. I mean, like Baltimore to me is just like average American regional city. That's that's all I'll say. One day we'll get your uh, yeah. We uh, we all know how you feel, bro. We all know how you feel. <laughs> I'm not gonna prop more of your American city thoughts on you. But everyone who's with us, thank you. Uh, welcome to the Shift Your Podcast. If you're new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button. We also added a membership tier, um, just for want to support the mandem. Uh, we do this as a passion project, so we have a we have a tier where you get a, an exclusive member badge by your name, and you get priority comment replies or something. But we reply to everyone every anyways. So I'm not really sure what that gets you, but. You get an emoji, that, that that's pretty sick. So nice. if you want an emoji by your name, feel free to hit that. If you buy it, want a bucket hat, we'll ship it right to your door or I'll deliver it to you in Louisville. Um, shout out to everybody who came up to us this weekend. It was insane. Like I'd sit down and there's like six shift gear fans out of eight being like, yo, nice hat, man. So uh, pretty dope this, to see our communities growing and, and we love you all. So if we yeah. see you, uh, if we see you anytime, stop us and, and, and bug us, please. We love meeting you. Yeah. Um, anything else before we sign off? I said, speaking of people like consuming our content, Emmett, like first I played top four, he told me he read my Roaring Noon article I wrote on Poke Beach. And it was like helpful for nice. him for the tournament. So I'm like, damn. So, uh, but yeah, like Anil, love love meeting people and all that. So great stuff. No, Anil, I have nothing else to say. You can you can sign this off. Fantastic. Thank you for being here. I don't have anything cool to sign off with, but we'll see you all next week. All right. Peace. Later.